Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel for those of you who are returning. If you are new here visiting for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Anita with Anita by Design and here on my YouTube channel you will find step-by-step, -step, very detailed sew-alongs, tutorials, pattern reviews, and other sewing related content to help you with your sewing projects. Today I am continuing with a four-part series on the Baby Lock Euphoria cover stitch machine. If you missed the first episode where I walked you through the entire machine showing you all of the different parts, then you can click here to watch that episode or you can click on the link in the description box below this video. Today I will be showing you all of the accessories that come with the machine. So let's just jump right in and get started. Okay, right now we're looking at all of the items that come packaged in the box with the Euphoria. So we have the instruction and reference guide. We have a small envelope of accessories, a large envelope of accessories. We have the cone holders, four of them, and these hold the large cones of thread on the machine. We have the presser foot that comes already attached on the machine, and we have the knee lifter. And finally, we have a sewing machine cover. It also comes with the power cord and foot pedal. First, we're going to take a look at the instruction and reference guide. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I get a new sewing machine, I literally go through the entire guide and read it from cover to cover. I like to know everything about the machine, and then I will go back for reference when I need it, but I love to just go through and read everything. So we have, of course, the table of contents, and then you will get a overview of the Euphoria all of the different parts and then there's the accessories this is a list of the accessories that come with the machine along with the picture so that you will know which parts you're looking at when you take them out of your package and then there are optional accessories that you can purchase so you can contact your retailer to get your hands on these accessories if you'd like to and then there are all of the different um, instructions on how to use the machine and then I want to bring your attention to the back of the book because there's a section that gives you information on using specialty threads so it starts here it gives you all the information you need to know when you want to use fancy threads and then here it has a specialty thread guide chart and I think this is so helpful if you are looking forward to getting really fancy and doing some amazing work with specialty threads then you may want to consult this guide then there is the troubleshooting area which is helpful because if you run into problems you can check this first to see if you can find a solution before taking it to your retailer for repairs and then there's the maintenance section that shows you how to clean your machine I do suggest going through your instruction guide to familiarize yourself with the machine. Now let's take a look at some of the accessories. Okay, now we're looking at all of the accessories that came inside of the little pouches and I'm gonna walk you through them, starting with the thread nets. So the machine comes with four thread nets and you won't use these, you won't need to use these with all of your threads. You will only need to use them if you are working with a slippery thread that tends to unwind and fall off the bottom of the spool so that's what these are used for and I'm going to show you how to insert the thread inside of the nets as we move forward it comes with a set of tweezers it comes with a cleaning brush so that you can keep the lint from the inside of your machine these are the guide fixing screws and they're used to attach any optional accessories that you may purchase for your machine onto the tabletop of the machine. Next, we have this little silver screw and this is the one that's used to attach the quilt guide to your machine and there's an opening on the back of the presser foot holder where you will insert this screw to tighten the quilt guide onto the presser foot holder. Then we have a package of needles and these are EX or EL 
by 705 CF. And these are the ones that are recommended for the machine. And what's different about these needles is it's semi, they're semi ballpoint. So these are appropriate for both knit and woven fabrics. So we get a packet of those. We have the Allen screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. Next, we have the looper threading wire. And what this is used for is the specialty threads that will not feed through the air threader in the machine. There are some machines that are, or some threads that are too thick to feed through that little opening. So that's what the thread guide is for. And I'll show you how to use that. Next, we have our four sponge discs and our four spool caps. And these are used when we are attaching smaller spools of thread onto the machine. And I'll show you how to do that. And then we have one large spool pin disc. So let's take a look at how some of these accessories work on the machine. Okay, this is the knee lifter and it can be used to raise and lower the presser foot with your knee so that you can keep your hands on your fabric while you're working. So when you press the knee lifter to the right with your knee, it will lift the presser foot and lower the feed dogs. So it has these little notches on the end and these fit into the opening on the front of your machine where that little hole is. So I'll show you how that's done. So to insert the knee lifter into the machine, you're gonna position it where the notches are on the left and right side, insert it into the opening, and then you're gonna push it in until it clicks into place, okay? And to operate the knee lifter, you will use your knee and push it over to the right to lift the presser foot. And then to lower the presser foot, you will just release it. Okay, we're looking at the back of the machine and I've already inserted three of the cone holders. And on the pin holder, there's the narrow portion, then there's a lip, and then it gets wider at the bottom. So you will take your cone holder and insert it onto the spool pin and you can twist it down until it won't go any further. So that's as far as it goes. And then you will take your cone of thread and just insert it on top. And then this is ready to thread to be threaded. Now, if you were working with one of the specialty threads or, you know, one of the threads that I talked about that's really slippery and then it unwinds from the bottom and slips off the bottom of the cone, then I want to show you how to use your thread net. So what you will do is open up the net and then insert your spool inside your cone. And then you want to take the excess and push it through the bottom. Then you will insert it onto your cone holder and then take the net and fold it down. And then your thread is there and then you're ready to thread your machine. And this will prevent the thread from falling off the bottom of the cone. Now, let's say you wanna use a, let me pull that off. <laughs> let's say you wanna use a smaller spool of thread. So what you wanna do first is you want to make sure that you insert a spool cap onto one end of the thread. And the reason we do that is because sometimes the thread gets caught on the edge of the spool because there are sharp parts there. So we insert that into the opening on the top of the spool. And as the thread is unwinding now, it won't catch onto the edge of the spool. Then you will take your sponge disc. And in this case, you're gonna remove 
the cone holder. And then you will place your sponge disc with the sponge side facing up. And then you will place your thread, your spool of thread on top. And then you're ready to thread your machine. Now I'm going to show you how to change the needles on the machine. And I'll be using the Allen wrench and the lint brush. So I'm going to change the left needle and using the lint brush, there's a little opening on the opposite end of the brush that holds the needle. So I'll be taking that opening and placing the needle through that hole and push it up as far as it will go. Then I'm gonna take the Allen wrench and insert it into the C1 opening for the left needle. And then I'm gonna turn it to loosen the needle and then I'll remove it. And it's that easy. So to replace the needle, whenever you're putting in a new needle, you wanna make sure that the flat side, let me remove this. You wanna make sure that the flat side of the needle is facing the back of the machine. So I'm gonna put this back into the lint or the opening on the lint brush, making sure that the flat side is facing the back. And I'm gonna insert it into the opening and push it up as far as it will go. And it should hit the top of the opening at the C1 position. And then I'm gonna use the Allen wrench to tighten the screw. And then remove the brush. And I'm gonna tug to make sure that it's secure and it is. So. That's how easy it is to change the needle. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, make sure you hit the like button down below and stay tuned for part three where I will be showing you how to thread the machine. And I cannot wait for you to see how easy it is to thread this machine. Your mind will be blown. <laughs> and I wanna send a shout out to Baby Lock. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video and I will see you guys next time. Make sure you come back for part three. Bye-bye.